touchdown on a 21-yard reception from Linney. That made it 14-14, and then Trey Chambers. We saw him in a scrimmage before the season play some safety. He had a tremendous interception in that game, and we said at that time, watch out for this kid. Yeah, we, he showed you some nice moves. We figured we were going to see a lot of him this year, and Steve Hannon said he's one of his best. He's playing the better, just about better than anybody else on the defensive side right now. So we'll be seeing his number a lot more tonight. Wesco 3A football brought to you also around your screen. You'll see Kathy Salvadolina. If you're in the market for a real estate transaction, Mr. Boyle, which I don't think you are. I've talked to your wife. 425-350-0020. And McDaniels Hardware and Do-It Center right in downtown Snohomish. As we start the second quarter, Lenny back to pass, getting a little pressure. Finds Pettis at around the 33, and he gets a couple yards and crosses the 35. Good for second first effort, down. too, by Pettis to get an extra three yards. Uh, Chris Namba on the tackle for Shorewood. Dalton Pettis, this is his third game back, was sat out most of the season, had a great touchdown against Mount Lake Terrace, and is getting some good time here. First and 10 at the 35. Linney now tosses it over, and... That was Quinton Dunbar. Dunbar caught it, but Dustin Phillips was right there for Shorewood on the tackle. That's Dunbar's been kind of struggling to get some yards. He's been kind of quiet the last, what, four or five games, Scott, and kind of struggling to get back in the thick of things. Loss of a yard back to the 34 now, second and 11. They're kind of, they're kind of throwing the Dunbar on those screens that are almost like laterals, and uh, Shorewood's doing a good job of being right there when it happens. Takes the handoff to Caribou, it sails it out. Nice catch by Dunbar. And he wheels it all the way up for, I think, a first down to no, the 45-yard line. Uh, it's right on the mark, Scott. It's going to be close. Right on the mark. So we just saw, we were just talking about Quentin Dunbar, and he gets into the action. It is going to be... Oh, I could Snohomish 6, Arlington 8 is what Todd Elvick's trying to get across to us. Excellent. First and 10. Caribou through the middle. Breaks the tackle. Now he gets to the right side at the 40. He's got a couple guys. Makes him miss. Cuts it to the 25. And he's finally taken down by big number 85 all the way down to the 20-yard line. That's about a 35-yard gain there for AK. And how many people did he make miss on that? Seven or eight players. There were people coming back down the field after he made a miss to try to tackle him. 35-yard carry. That gives him four carries for 67 yards. Did a little flash dance at the end there, Tim. <laughs> get out of get out of those tackles. Lenny hands it right back to Caribou on the left side. He's got to be exhausted. <laughs> but he gets a four-yard pickup about down to the 16. Well, Caribou's off. AK's healthy right now. Fifth play of this drive. Again, early second quarter action. Glacier Peak up 21-14 over Shorewood in the early going here the second quarter. The game down in Snohomish, Arlington, Snohomish. Snohomish up 6-0, is that right? 6-8. Six 6-8, to, eight, Six to eight, excuse me. Lenny back to pass. Ooh, it's a bouncer. Doesn't quite get there. Diaz, good coverage. Intended for Hurd, the a senior. Kind of off his mark on that. That's Austin Jacobson that's coming out of the game there. Leaves him at third and six now. Looks like, I don't know if Marcus is limping a little bit when he came up out well, of that. Now he looks like he's in it. Well, I think Jacobson was limping a little bit. Lenny back to pass. Elledge on the near side. Now he's got a roll right. He goes uh, deep. Another ball. Looks like it slipped out of his hand. It incomplete. It's, uh, two balls in a row that's really off the mark for Lenny. I don't know that that one was going to be completed anyway. Trying to get the ball to four-year starter Marcus Hurd, who was in the end zone. Now we're sitting at fourth and six from the 16. Are they going to go for that? Or are they going to kick a field goal? They're, they're lined up like they're going to go for it. Ron Henthorne, who's got odds. But they're easily, in, they're easily in their kicker's range, no problem. 
They're just under 40, 50% on the year. Elledge at the 20, usually see you later. And it is, and he puts the white jersey down on the blue end zone for a touchdown <laughs> Glacier Peak. Yeah, that's what, he's one of our favorite guys to call, and uh, he, he could just feel it when he got that ball. He was, he's got that nose for the end zone, and he what had about four missed tackles there and gets his way in. He's sneaky, that Sean Elledge, and he tiptoed into the blue end zone. And that makes it 27, make that 28 as Branson Corwin kicks it through the uprights. And we've got 28 to 14, Glacier Peak on top with 9.44 left in the second quarter. And Elledge is having another big night tonight. Uh, he had two touchdowns last game, and he's got two touchdowns already tonight in the first half. And we're... Nine minutes and 44 seconds left to go in the first half. So. He's got he's to catch up to his uh, teammate, Evan Nelson. Yep. He's getting there. They're within two of each other, but they seem to go back and forth. And if uh, history repeats itself, Evan Nelson will probably find himself in the end zone next. 16-yard run. Glacier Peak now 78 yards on the ground, 57 yards through the air. And the Shorewood Thunderbirds, 109, big chunk of that was Eugene Holly's 80-yard run, 13 carries for 109 yards. And they've had 54 yards through the air. You know, Aaron Miller throws a nice ball to Southpaw. You know, actually, if you look at the stats, Shorewood's actually winning the game on the stats right now. They're not on the scoreboard. But uh, Shorewood's putting up some big stats. Glacier Peak, of course, got a, a, a kickoff return and an interception. So... Uh, you know, those don't really show up on the stats so much, but they definitely count on the scoreboard. Branson, now that's caught by Josh Okamura. He takes it past the 25, where he's finally tackled by a gang of Glacier Peak Grizzlies. And Corwin finally keeps one inside the field. That win might have a big factor, because he got that, he's been kicking it right out of the end zone, and that one only went down to about the 10 yard line. Michael Palmer, the junior usual running back there in the mix for special teams on the tackle for the Grizzlies. Again, good down to Michael McDaniels Hardware and Garden, 510 Second Street in, in downtown Sumahomish for anything and everything you could possibly imagine they have it. Support the local economy. Absolutely. Go down to Snohomish. To the 22-yard line, flags yeah. everywhere. They're going to Usually that's that going to be a false start from where they're calling that. Yeah, false start on Shorewood. It's going to back them up five yards. So Shorewood getting Eugene Holly going on a little bit on the running game. Had some nice passes. I like these guys in blue. No, they're doing well. They're hanging tough. Um, you know, I, Holly, Holly's actually, believe it or not, he's actually struggled. Uh, with not for that 80-yard run, he's actually struggling on most of his other plays. Uh, give him credit, though. That was a great run he had. Seems like they got to get him on the edge, which we've seen over the season. At some points, Glacier Peak can be vulnerable there on the uh, ends. First and 15 now. He's got trouble, but he gets it off. Oh, his intercepted. Trey Guess Chambers. who? Number three, Tay Trey Chambers. Tay Trey gets it down to the 25-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Did he get something going here tonight or what? Wow. I, well, Trey Chambers, I, somebody must have pissed on his cornflakes this morning. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but he's just all over the place out oh. there. Oh, Aaron Miller, again, nice ball. Just Trey Chambers playing the field back and there. He's all over the place back there. Second. And he's a sophomore, ladies and gentlemen. Very exciting player. And his father is also one of the coaches, Richie Chambers, off the 91 co-national championship team for the Washington Huskies. Lenny's back in business now at the 25-yard line. Threatening again, 28-14 Glacier Peak with 9.28 left to go in the second quarter. Second interception for Aaron Miller tonight. Both to his favorite Glacier Peak receiver, Trey Chambers. Lenny goes down the no, middle overthrown. and it's overthrown, incomplete, trying to get Evan Nelson on the post. Well, you know Evan Nelson's dying to get back in the end zone. <laughs> yeah, he knows. He's like, Sean Ellis, what are you doing, <laughs> man? <laughs> I was open. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to come back talk to Lenny. you got to get me the ball. Ellis already has two on me tonight. <laughs> and that ball was just overthrown. Lenny's a little off his mark tonight, you know, but fortunately it hasn't really cost him anything. Some big plays here tonight. And, you know, the... The 
quarterback Miller for Shorewood's kind of on his mark, but, you know, Trey Chambers has been right there. Second and ten now. Lenny will take it up the gut himself. Nice tackle from behind Diaz. Going to net him about six yards there. Dylan Quigley also the senior 5'9", 188-pounder on the tackle there for the Thunderbirds. So third and five now from the 20-yard line. Lenny keeps it to the right side, gets it down to the 10, all the way down to the six-yard line, a first down and plenty more for Mr. Lenny. And I've said it all year, the key to, one of the keys to Glacier Peak wins is how well Lenny runs the ball. And last week in a loss, he didn't do it too well and fumbled a few times, but he's looking pretty good running the ball tonight. Seven-yard carry for Lenny. Oh, excuse me, five yards, two carries for 12 yards for David Lenny so far. Now he hands it off to AK. AK-47 to the right side, and he is crushed. No, they went to the short side of the field on that with AK, and uh, not much doing there. There you see the linebacker, Eugene Holly, their stud offensive running back there, who Rob Peschel told us is one of the best defensive players they have on the Thunderbirds. So no gain there, still second and goal at the seven yard line. Glacier Peak looks in for the play. Caribou six carries for 71 yards tonight in the first half so far, Tim. Yep, he's looking good tonight. Oh, that's gonna be a, probably a false start. Yeah, false start on Glacier Peak and that's gonna make it, you know, that's gonna make it second and 12. Well, we talked it before the game on the way on our long drive over the shoreline here about the penalties of Glacier Peak this year. We did talk to the coaches. I mean, it's just killing them. They've got 700 plus yards in penalties coming into tonight. Yeah, it, they've really got to clean that up. You know, as they're making a march toward the playoffs here, they got to start cleaning those penalties up. And it's like we talked about earlier. It's not just the penalties; it's when they're getting the penalties. You know, like here they're getting one in the red zone. It may not cost them anything, but it's it's tough getting penalized in the red zone. Second and 13, that whistle's going one. again. Timeout. Oh, Shorewood good. wanted to regroup, didn't like what they saw. Well, Aaron Miller, the quarterback for Shorewood, came into tonight's game with 10 interceptions. Added a couple tonight. Again, the left-hander, I like his ball. He just, you know, Trey Chambers is jumping the routes. Yeah, and, you know, uh, I think you had talked to the coach and Aaron Miller. This is really like his first full year playing quarterback. And he actually looks pretty impressive. But like you said, uh, you got Trey Chambers out there looking like Lester Hayes of the old Oakland Raiders. Or Sticky something. fingers. Sticky fingers, exactly. <laughs> And he's missing his favorite target, big 81, Gage Carroll. Ga yeah, Gage Carroll, who is a monster. He just, this again, another first-time player. He's a senior, but this is the first year he's played football. And he is tearing the league up, 14 receptions, 410 yards. But the kicker, he's averaging 29.3 yards yeah, per reception. Yeah, he's basically averaging like 30 yards a reception. I mean, I... I don't, you just can't really replace a guy like that in the lineup. You know, you can't, it's a big, that's a big uh, boost for Glacier Peak. Not having a bad game is Aaron Miller, eight, uh, excuse me, three for eight with 55 yards. Again, one touchdown, two interceptions, 741 left. If you're just joining us, Glacier Peak up 28 to 14 here at Shoreline Stadium. Want to thank everybody for joining us. We broke a record last week, Tim. 104 viewers. How you doing? <laughs> We're destined for ESPN here, Scott. 104. Now, all kidding aside, we thank our 104 listeners out there. We really appreciate it. All right, resume action. Lenny now looks to his left. Uh -oh. It goes over, yeah, and that's intercepted. Again. Tipped. He's got it at the 20. And he's finally caught up all the way. Gets to the 40-yard line. Now yeah, what happened there is it looks like Evan Nelson was going to be open and he actually slipped on the turf and uh, landed right in the defender's hands. Quentin Dunbar caught up to him trying to see who caught that ball. Who Somebody's hurt on the field. They're all taking a knee, so we got a player down somewhere. Warren Cho on the interception, Tim, the sophomore, 5'8", 140. No, uh, that was an early Christmas present for him. Uh, like I said, Evan Nelson, I believe, just slipped on the turf and 
it kind of landed right in his hands. So it was not tipped at the line. I couldn't, couldn't quite tell. It, I don't think it was tipped. I think it was a the receiver slipped there. Warren Costly Sh turnover for Glacier Peak. They're knocking at the door in the red zone. And just like that, now uh, Shorewood's going to be marching down the field. Up 28-14, Glacier Peak, very similar case in, or in the first quarter. Shorewood was threatening. And Aaron Miller had an interception down there. And it was a pick six. So Glacier Peak gives up the ball tonight here for the first time for David Linney. That's his first interception of the evening. Well, Linney's looking a little better than he did last week, of course. Last week he had the five turnovers, and he, I, don't, I don't think you'll see that out of him tonight. Cho, the, the sophomore who made the interception, is still down on the far side of the field. It didn't look like he got tackled real hard on the play, but um, he's okay. He tweaked something. You know, they've had to change rules because of it. And but yeah, ambulance is on the field now. You can see the ambulance now in your picture. We've got a gentleman. Uh, always interesting where our camera is placed here when we go on the road. And Todd Elbig is out there manning the camera. Does an amazing job as the players now kind of congregate away from their typical spot on the sideline. Again, we're giving you yeah. commercial free action here at STSPN. We do not go away to commercials, so you're stuck listening <laughs> to me and Tim. Sometimes they probably <laughs> wish we would go to a commercial. <laughs> Don't these guys ever take a break? They'd rather listen to, like, a Coca-Cola commercial or something. Well, and also, the booth here at Shoreline is, is actually one of the nicest booths we've been to in our travels, but it is a open booth, so you have the entire staff from the home stadium. You have the, the home team coaches, the and also the visiting coaches. So you think you're sick of hearing us out there? Uh, yeah, the people in the booth <laughs> are probably about to kick us out by now. But yeah, unfortunately, if you're just joining us, uh, the camera's on a uh, injured Shorewood player that ha that apparently has broken his leg out there on an interception return. Warren Cho, again, a sophomore, 5'8", 140 pounder, just made a great interception, ran it back about 30 yards, and it didn't look, we, again, we don't have the luxury of instant replay, but Tim and I were talking about it. did not look like a dramatic hit. He might have just, you know, might have been one of those quirky, funny things. I am, yeah, it almost looked like he just kind of got tackled out of bounds. And, um, but that's what happens. Well, Alex Caribou getting a lot of carries tonight. AK-47, the seniors. Now, uh, well, the camera is on this... Uh, Chu getting uh, the player, Cho, excuse me, Warren Cho getting taken care of. Again, broken left leg, hope he's okay. Crowd very quiet here, nice crowd here at Shoreline Stadium. Players are kind of warming up so they don't get uh, too stiff. It's a homecoming crowd, kind of a sad thing to see happen at homecoming. It really it's is. obviously sad to see any time, but uh, not what you want to see on homecoming, obviously. So saying AK-47, six carries for 71 yards. David Linney, two carries for 12 yards. You know, stat-wise, Scott, I probably give the edge actually to Shorewood on the stats. Uh, they're hanging tough on the stats, but uh, you know, a couple big plays, a pick six, and a in a kickoff return are the difference right now. Yeah, Glacier Peak uh, four returns for 145 yards that's that's probably their biggest prize of the game. Yeah well obviously if you're just joining us now Trey Chambers had the pick six you know they were dr the other team was driving and he picks it off and goes the goes for a touchdown and then Elledge of course gets the kickoff return for a touchdown and that's really the difference in the, four the 14 point lead right now. This is the eighth game we've covered here, kind of launching a new era at STSPN.com, the Snohomish Times Sports Network. We hope you've enjoyed the action. We are still in the second quarter. Unfortunately, we've got a, uh, an injury here for a Shorewood Thunderbird player. Number two, Warren Cho, apparently has broken his left leg, we we're being told up here in the booth. 7.31 left to go in the second quarter. Glacier Peak leading 28 to 14, had the ball driving to score again, and young Mr. Cho, the injured player, with the interception. 
Tim, I don't know, sometimes people think in the winter it's not time to go down to Harvey Field, downtown Snohomish, and strap up the old parachutes and talk to our good friends at Snohomish Skydive. Hey, and you're going to see Scott and I up in the air pretty soon. We're going to give it a try. Snohomish Skydiving. They got a 100% safety record, they say? They do. 360-568-7703, Tim, just as the crowd, maybe you can hear in the background, giving well-deserved applaud to the injured, pl injured player Warren Cho getting now in the back of the ambulance, as you can see on your screen. Never a good sight here at any sporting event, especially no. when the kids are so young. Again, he's a sophomore, probably 15 years old or so, 14, 15. Never want to see the ambulance on the field. So, yeah, Chris, uh, Tim and I have been threatening that we're going to do Snohomish skydiving. I'm not going tandem with you, though. <laughs> I don't trust you enough. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, don't I'm, forget, prob don't I'm probably to pull the cord or something. I'm probably just not going. <laughs> no, you're committed. Tonight's coverage also brought to you by the Mongos right there in Clearview on Highway 9, kind of tucked in there at the station. Kind of, you know, not super easy to find, but I'm telling you, if you find it, you're going to be happy. It's the best place you don't know about. It is. It's kind of, they kind, it's kind of snuck back in the corner there. Did have lunch there, took the wife there. She was all happy. It's her favorite place to go. Go down and see Chris and Shannon, the uh, great owners and purveyors. Chris, a phenomenal chef down there at Bongo's in Clearview. They have a new soup. The black do. bean tortilla something you were telling yes, me? Yes, I had it today. Black bean black bean tortilla, yes. We might have to have a, just a meal session. Maybe we can... <laughs> you got any recipes, Tim? <laughs> you don't want me cooking. <laughs> I can't even make toast. Come on! Well, now the ambulance is going off the field. Hopefully the kid's okay. And well, they're going to resume it. And uh, obviously Shorewood has the ball after that interception. So First and ten at their own, 39. Hate to see the kid made a great interception and then he got injured and... Uh, Again, 731, Glacier Peak up 28-14 now. Quarterback Aaron Miller for the Thunderbirds, first and 10. He pitches it to Holly on the near side, taken down, probably gets back to the line of scrimmage. Jacobson on the tackle for Glacier Peak. And they're doing a good job containing Holly. What Holly's looking to do is try to get around that corner and that's how he burned Glacier Peak for an 80-yard touchdown earlier in the game. They're going to give him a gain of one. Leave him at second and nine. Eugene Holly, the running back for the Thunderbirds, broke the 1,000-yard mark as you see Aaron Miller fakes it. Now he's going deep down the left side. Brandon Hershey on the coverage, and he comes down. It's the third interception for Aaron Miller and Brandon Hershey the senior finally gets a INT and gives the ball to the Glacier Peak Grizzlies. Yeah, good to see Brandon Hershey getting an interception. Trey Chambers is out there hogging all the interceptions lately. Good to see Brandon Hershey get one. Miller trying to find Chris Namba, number 11 on that. The well, ball just hung up there too it, long. It, that was actually a, a ball he'd like to have back. The other two that Trey Chambers got, those weren't bad throws. This one, however, he made a mistake on. Nice job of Hershey to turn and see the ball on that one, so he was in good position. So now, back to Glacier Peak football. David Linney, the senior. First and 10 now from the 25. Hands off to Quinton Dunbar. Breaks through down to the 40. He's got speed. Number one finally arm tackles him all the way down to the 34-yard line. That's Jeez. Shorewood territory. Pick up of, I don't know, uh, 30, 40 yards on that. They're going to give him 40 yards for the pickup. And, Scott, it's good to see Quentin kind of getting back into the swing of things. He's been quiet for a few games. Good to see him have a big game like that. Big pickup. Now it's Caribou on the left side. Scampers, now he breaks to the right to the 25, to the 20. <laughs> and he just, he hugs and says goodbye to number 24, then he dances a little longer down to the 19. He, he kind of got down to the sideline around the 20, and he turned around and started going the other way. He said, well, you're not going to tackle me. Dust, 
Let's try this again. Dustin Phillips finally brings him down, but Josh Akamura, they kind of said, maybe they introduced each other, you know, said what's going on, yeah. and then he said, see you later. He was asking him something about what was on TV tonight and turned around and went the other way. Big first down, though, for Glacier Peak. They're driving. 6.03 left to go. First and 10 at the 19. Lenny takes it by himself. Up the gut and gets down to the 15-yard line. Five-yard pickup for Lenny. Yeah, they'll take that all day long. Four yards they're giving him. Dylan Quigley, the senior on the tackle, one of the captains of the Thunderbirds. Second and six now, calling it at the 15-yard line. David Linney back, now Elledge in motion across the formation. Gives it to Caribou up the middle. It's gonna be right at about a first down. I think he's over the 10-yard line, so that should be a first down. And folks, we'll try to get you an update later on the injured Shorewood player. We're in the booth with some of the coaches and we'll, uh, for the friends and family of Shorewood, we'll try to get you an update as soon as we can. Third and one on that for Linney. Pickup of four. Big Third Levi. And one. Hmm. Le it looked like he got over that 10 yard line. I'm surprised they didn't give him the first down on that. Busy Levi Diaz on the tackle again with Quigley. Third and four. Now Lenny back to pass. Dumps it now. A little screen to Elledge. Elledge uh -oh. at the five. Look out. And he He's stumbles in, in and leans across. Touchdown, Glacier Peak. Number three tonight for Sean Elledge. And he's slowly creeping up on Evan Nelson. I think he's one behind him now for the lead. That's three touchdowns tonight, two last games. So Elledge is, after a couple quiet games for Elledge, he's right back in the thick of things. 15-yard reception from Lenny, and here's Branson Corwin, and it is good, and that will make it. The Glacier Peak Grizzlies, 35, and the Shorewood Thunderbirds, 14, with 4.36 left to go in the second quarter. Well, and you know what Elledge is going to be saying to the coach. He's going to be saying, well, one of, them do, one of them was on special teams, so come on. Get me back in there. When, when Mr. Elledge, the wrestler, as we like to call him, gets the ball anywhere within the 10-yard line, it's usually... It's going to be a touchdown. It's go time. Yep. He's got that nose for it. And we can, you can sense that he catches it, and just like he caught that one, it's like, yep, he's, he's going to find his way in. So after a long timeout for the injured th uh, Thunderbird player, Warren Cho, again, as Tim said, we'll try and get that information to you. Josh Okamura now back for the Thunderbirds to receive as Branson Corwin tees it up. Brisk little wind here tonight going right to left from your screen. And Helios Pere, and I apologize to everybody there, probably not pronouncing his name, fakes the handoff there in the special teams. Uh oh. But he's got it to the 20, the 30. Elledge got him down. All the way up to the 33 or 4 yard line. Nice return for Josh Okamura. Elledge, nice tack, nice solo open field tackle by Sean, or that may have saved another 20, 30 yards on the play. Seeing Elledge all over the place tonight. Kickoff returns, special teams on defense, three touchdowns. Bad news for the rest of uh, for the Thunderbirds and the rest of the Wesco 3A. He is a junior. He will bad be back next year, the wrestler. Aaron Miller tries to get on target. Oh, he fumbled. fumbled. He fumbled. Picked up, up by Glacier B Sean by Elledge. Sean Elledge, of course. <laughs> To the 50, now he's going to purvey the field. Uh -oh. Go back left. Uh -oh. He gets his use. He's 75 to the 30. He's gone. 20. You know the rest of the story. And he's finally oh. tackled in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Glacier Peak. I think they're going to call a uh, late hit out of bounds. Or Eugene Holly tried to catch up, and I think it was probably a frustration. And he went and tackled him down after he had crossed the white line. Unless they were caught, kind of, Elledge kind of pranced his way in the end zone. It may have, it could be an unsportsmanship, too. I've seen them call that play before. 
Oh, and the turnovers are killing the Thunderbirds. Actually, they could be in this game right now if they weren't turning it over. Well, the touchdown should still stand no matter what, no matter what they call on that, because they threw the flag after Elledge was in the end zone. Ab yes, yes, yes. But we'll see if we can get, see if we can uh, figure out what that penalty is going to be. It's going to be an unsportsmanship one way or the other. So it was a five-yard gain, and he fumbled the ball, and Mr. Elledge, the guy that the... the I mean, he's got to be our dynamic diesel player of the night. Oh, absolutely. And we were just, I just was saying, <laughs> we were talking, he's all over the field. He's on special teams. He's getting interceptions. Okay, here comes the flag. They did. They called it on Glacier Peak. I think it's because, I think it was because Elledge was kind of dancing his way. He kind of stopped uh. and kind of danced into the end zone. I think they called him unsportsmanship like uh, for that. So it will be tacked on for the kickoff, but Branson Corwin on, Lane Pillen, the hold, and the kick is up, and it is good. So well, I'm sure he's going to get a talking to for that if it's if it's the penalty I'm thinking it is, because uh, you don't want to see that. And Elledge has got four touchdowns tonight. He doesn't need to be prancing his way into the end zone. Big night for junior Sean Elledge. So that makes it 42 to 14, Glacier Peak, with 408 left to go <laughs> in the second quarter. Well, more importantly, it's Ella just got four touchdowns on the night, and uh, he's obviously having a. I want to say he's having a coming out party because he's been coming out all year, but he's had a quiet. He's had a few quiet games, and uh, between this week and last week, he's got six touchdowns. My goodness. Don't like to see that. Don't like to see that uh, unsportsmanship like penalty though. He got one last week too against uh, Mount Vernon. Well, this could have been. This started out as such a different game. The first quarter, we were we came into the second quarter. It was 21-14 early in the second quarter. Elledge, uh, I believe, his second touchdown of the night at that time. A 16-yard run, making it 28-14. And it's gone crazy. Too many turnovers for Shorewood. Little squibber now. Taken by 24. Oh, Evan Nelson. <laughs> what a great open field tackle by Nelson. Josh Okamura on the return, but Evan Nelson... Having fun on special teams. He doesn't get out there. He no, he tackled that. That shows you how quick he is. And what you probably don't notice is, you know, they got him. They tackled him about the 35. And keep in mind, there was a 15-yard penalty. So to hold him, you know, about the 35-yard line, that's a good special teams play by Glacier Peak. So Shorewood starts here on their own 36-yard line. Chris Namba, the near side re receiver. They're going to hand it off to Holly, and he's going to get some tough yardage, maybe a couple up the middle. Well, Shorewood's having a tough time tonight running it right up the middle on Glacier Peak, and I think they're normally pretty good on that with uh, with some of the other teams, but uh, they need to try to work it around the tackles and get, get it outside, and that's where uh, he picked up that 80-yard touchdown earlier tonight. 3.36 left to go in the first half here. Second and seven at their own 39. Aaron Miller, the quarterback, pitches it out to Holly on the right side. There's Timmy Douglas. Oh. Timmy Douglas, the Rooney, tackles him by the shoe tops and gets him down for a loss. Probably about a four or five yard loss on that too. Maybe more four yard loss, I think they're saying. Great play by Timmy Douglas, the leading tackler on the Glacier Peak Grizzlies. Timmy the roadie Douglas, number 10, one of the smallest guys out there, but he is unbelievable. You look at him and you might think you're you might think he's on like the junior high team, and then all of a sudden he comes up big, comes out of nowhere, and he's hard to contain. I think Eugene Holly thought he had no problem. Yeah, he Eugene Holly step saying, out of that. Who's this little kid coming at me? <laughs> So now they're at the 34, fakes it. Now he's going up top again. Oh, oh and Trey traffic. Chambers almost had his third interception. Incomplete. Got right into the hands of Trey Chambers. And, oh, he wants that one back. Selfishly, he's looking for his third interception of the night. Chris Namba, obviously, his favorite receiver. Again, if you're just joining us, missing a huge target, number 81. Gage Carroll tonight for Shorewood. Leaves him fourth 
and 11. They're going to punt. That's Chris Namba back there to do the punting. Gets it off. Again, a beautiful punter. It's taken by Number Hines. One. Austin Hines goes to the left side to the 40, and he is drugged down and out of bounds around the 38. Now they're going to give him the 40-yard line of Glacier Peak. Yeah, and i got to give... Uh, I got to cut Sh Shorewood some slack. You know, it's real tough seeing one of your players go take being taken off on an ambulance. You know, really that's is. A, that's that takes a lot of wind out of your sail right there, and that uh, you never want to see anything like that. Number 44, Dylan Quigley, another captain on the Thunderbirds, with the tackle there. He's playing a heck of a game. So Glacier Peak now. We'll have to be on quarterback watch, even though it's the first half still, but David Linney, the senior, still in with Caribou on his left. Now he goes over, passes it, oh. he gets in and out of the hands of Evan Nelson, shades of the game in Meadowdale. It was a little bit behind him, but uh, I think Evan was kind of thinking, I'm taking this to the house. Just leaves him at second and 10 from their own 40-yard line. Again, Glacier Peak up big now, 42-14 with 2.22 left on a homecoming night here at Shoreline Stadium for the Shorewood Thunderbirds. Lenny in the shotgun. Now he delays. Now he hands it off to Caribou. He's got a ton of green field in front. A big hit a big by Emilio's Perry. Gets him down, but a first down all the way to Thunderbird territory in the 41-yard line. And, you know, AK's racking up some big yards tonight. He's kind of, uh, he's going to be creeping down the door of uh, Eugene Hawley type numbers right now. Breaks the century mark. Eight carries, 104 yards, and we're in the first half. Lenny fakes to the right. Now oh. goes left, a diving try, but incomplete is Evan Nelson. Almost bounced up into the hands of the uh, of num the, re the defender number one. What's that? And Helios he Pere. Oh, yes. And Helios Pere. Well, let me tell you, Mr. Lenny, he put a little mustard on that one. <laughs> that was he a did. hot ball. A little too hot for uh, Nelson to hang on to. A little too hot to handle. It leaves him at second and ten from now the... Shorewood 41-yard line is Ellidge now on the near side. Lenny looking at the wristband to see what uh, he's supposed to do here. Fakes the handoff, takes him himself. He's hit the backfield but gets by him and charges ahead all the way down to the 26-yard line. Good pursuit in the backfield but didn't do much good. It did, you know, he faked the handoff and he kind of faked out a couple players. And then he got stuck right in the back back there and uh, looked like he might have about a two-yard loss and just kept on his horse. David Linney having a nice night on the ground so far. Six carries for 48 yards. That a 15-yard carry. Linney now gets it over to Evan Nelson who picks it off the turf and catches it, but I'm sure he might have been better off to drop that. It probably would have been. About the same, netted out about the same either way. And how many yards does Caribou have right now tonight? Uh, Alex Caribou, rushing-wise, has eight carries for 104 yards. So he's having a big night. He's a, he is right up there with Eugene Hawley. Closing minute now of the quarter, and he finds Evan Nelson at the oh, 10. Oh, and he's got it! And he's in! Wow! Oh, Glacier Peak! He took... Alcamora for the ride. And and Josh, that was a pick, I didn't know they did piggyback rides in high school football. Well, Josh Okamura, he's a junior, 5'6", 150. Evan Nelson, come on for the ride, little fella. Evan Nelson was not going to be denied on that play. And Evan's probably pissed that Ella just been in the end zone four <laughs> times. And he's like, wait a minute. Branson Corwin on for the extra point. Well, and it's getting ugly now. 49 Glacier Peak, 14 Shorewood, and, and he caught that ball around the 15. Oh, yeah, and he drug him pretty much the whole way. And if you're just joining us, tonight between Evan Nelson and Sean Elledge, they're making up for six touchdowns tonight. I'm going to call it right now. That's got to be our dynamic diesel play of the game. That is. That's got to be. I don't even know what's going to happen in the second half. We may change our minds, we so st <laughs> stay with us. <laughs> it's one of the dynamic diesels because oh. he... 
That was a motorhome carrying a little Fiat. <laughs> it, seemed, <laughs> it seemed like it. You know, and Evan Nelson's not a big guy, but he's very quick. Let's look at Evan Nelson. He is having a nice little evening tonight. I think he likes the friendly confines of Shoreline Stadium. He's got five receptions, 45 yards, two touchdowns, two drops. Now, and now you got Ellen just probably in the coach's ear. Now look, Evan's got two touchdowns. Get me back in there. 15-yard reception and carry. He was a carry-on luggage there was uh, Josh Okamura. Now he gets it. Okamura now on the return gets it to the 30 and on another open field tackle by Sean Elledge. Elledge does a nice job. So 55 seconds left until halftime. Glacier Peak now in control 49 to 14 over Rob Peschel's Shorewood Thunderbirds and should probably in the second half Tim start to see some good strong young sophomores. I would think so. I think it's a about, about the time where he would normally put him in with this lead. Aaron Miller, the quarterback, gets the handoff. Gets it over to Diaz now on the left side. Nothing doing for Diaz. As Smeds, Austin Smedrub, Timmy Douglas, all there to greet him for no gain. My, my drive chart is running out of room here, Boyle. <laughs> you better start another page there. Clock running now, 28 seconds. They're going to keep it going Probably here. Probably get one more playoff. Second and 10 on their own, 31. Miller now hands it on the left side to Holly. Again, Nothing. great tackle there by Jacobson. Austin Jacobson, the junior, having some spectacular plays on the defensive side. We don't call it... He's one of those guys that really makes some big hits. I'm going to say he's the biggest hitter on the team. Two seconds, one second, and that'll do it for the first half. 49 Glacier Peak points put up on the board and 14 for the Thunderbirds of Shorewood. Well, it was an exciting first quarter. Kind of slowed down if you just joined us. Had a pretty one of the biggest injuries we've seen all season. Warren Cho, number two, the sophomore for Shoreward, broke his left leg. He's been taken away on an ambulance. We'll try and get uh, some new updated info. Hopefully he's all right. And that kind of dampened the hearts of, of Shorewood. Yeah, that does, that, that takes the wind out of their sail. Looks like they're, re, it looks like they're having a little powwow in the, you know, over by the end zone and talking about it. But uh, yeah, our hearts go